Well, this is a Monday morning, viewers, and uh, I'm happy to welcome my co-conspirator, Pat McGart. How are things with you today, Pat? Well, morning, now, I don't want you to tell us all of your problems. Just make it short. And no, 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 no. I, I have very few problems. Thanks very <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, you're feeling okay? Glad. Okay. What right. about yourself? Ah, sure. What can I, if I complain, nobody listens to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to try to go through at least two items, and we're going to do the again as we did last week, the shortened versions were twenty minute version. Um, yeah. the a man that uh, there was a well, his name was well known before last week, but they did a documentary on him in RTE, Noel Brown, Dr. Noel Brown, mm -hmm. who was famous for being the minister who brought in the mother and child uh, bill. But as a result of that, um, the doctors and then the Catholic Church particularly um, sank his career, essentially. He was in, I noticed yeah. he was in five different um, political parties. That's amazing. Uh, I wonder why he did that. That's amazing. I, can I can I go off on a total digression to yeah. start with? Uh, I remember years ago there was a man called Patrick McGill. He was a well-known author from Donegal. He was brought up. He was brought up in a place, Glendies, and then he went. He was hired out as a boy, and uh, somewhere like outside of Straban, uh, Glen Valley or something, Glendale or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, bottom line was, as a young man, he uh, he had a brother who was very ill, and the father wouldn't send for the uh, the doctor. He, he had about five shillings and he kept that for, he was handed over to the priest the next morning and so on. Anyway, uh, the for some sort of, you know, the offerings or something that yes, they, yes, they used to yes. do years ago. Oh. Yeah, you know, because read off the altar. Oh. And his father, uh, the pride, the father had the pride that he didn't want to be seen to be the poor man. And he had, yeah. it was either the yeah. doctor or the priest got the money. Anyway, the bottom line, I'm, what I'm getting to here is they didn't call for the doctor. And the wee fella died. And Patrick and Miguel, and this is when Miguel was about 10 or 11, and then Miguel went down to uh, the priest to give the money that his father had sent down. And while there, he had to go to the toilet and he asked, could he use the bathroom? And he went up and he noticed there were gold taps in the priest's bath and in the, <laughs> and, the and all the rest of it. And anyway, he became a rabid socialist and basically anti-Catholic. Fast forward about 40 years, and I'm talking to this man, and we're sitting chatting, and he tells me, ah, I, 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 he was from the Glanties area, and I said, ah, he was not but a troublemaker, and so on, so on. And he was a troublemaker because he wrote books about what he experienced, about the poverty and about the uh, inequality and all the rest of it. And funny, when I was reading about Noel Brown, that story that I read years ago, I think it was called Children of the Dead End, was McGill's book that I read about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it, Noel Brown struck me as exactly the same. He reeled against the power and the inequality of the Catholic Church, and it had destroyed him. Or basically, well, it destroyed his career. Well, he's a really interesting guy. I, I, I was checking on him on Wikipedia, and, and they say that he spent, he grew up part of his time. He grew up in the bog side. I, I remember but, reading that years ago. I never yeah. knew that, and they lived in a whole variety of places. And he was from a very poor family, and all of his siblings. Except one died of TB, and that last yeah. one. And his mother died. and father died of TB as well. Yeah, and the one that survived actually for some time and then died uh, had a cleft palate, and I don't know what else wrong with him. Uh, so I think back... it was sort of personal experience that he was uh, determined to try to do something for people. Yeah. Um, uh, he was also so lucky because um, although he was from such a poor family, I'm not sure how it happened, but he went to England and he was sort of taken over by or. Uh, protected by and the... there's another thing he was taken over by a man called Neville Chance here's a very strange thing there's a real concern about that as well Neville Chance his father was a surgeon and Neville Chance came to Donegal and bought a farm that's literally about five miles up the road from where I'm sitting now really and yeah. he, he was a genuinely nice man very nice man actually and very well respected by his neighbours, a decent man in every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know whether it was Neville Chance, I presume it was Neville Chance's father, who was a surgeon, paid for Noel Brown to go through medical school. Yes, and he went to, to he did his studies, medical studies, in Trinity College. Yeah, and you see, that, that's what caused the problem right there and then. <laughs> well, he was suspect do you, do you, from that Do you want to explain? On. 
Yeah, because uh, but, John Charles McQuaid, uh, Archbishop John Charles McQuaid, forbade any Catholic to go to Trinity. And the amazing thing is that virtually no Catholics went to Trinity. So yeah. uh, Noel Brown stood out all the more for that. Now, I'll tell you yeah. something. I, I'm a wee bit confused because um, I don't know the full story. Noel Brown uh, worked on the TB question and managed to virtually obliterate TB. Yeah. Which was a fantastic thing to have done. I mean, fantastic. Yeah. Because it was killing families, including his own. You know, people just yeah. died of it. That's uh, what so that motivated them, Jude. Yeah, that was great. So then you have the question of um, the children uh, and the mm. birth uh, in terms of what that meant for the mother and the care the mother needed, prenatal and postnatal. And his scheme would have given free medical care, not free, but, you know, would have been funded by the taxation system uh, until, the, until the kid was 16. 16, yeah. And, now, that was, well, I wonder if that was excessive because clearly that was a huge leap but you need you see i think you need people to have it explained to them look this is good but the catholic church mm. weighed in and said this is bad and the catholic mm. church was such a yeah, strong that, strong force then no brown's uh, brown's whole career was controversial what he was advocating was not on, on heard of in europe but it was unheard of in this part of the world and by the way here's another contradiction the uh, catholic church um sort of weighed in on them with everything flying in the south but didn't oppose the same sort of scheme in the north and uh, but really what they were saying was they were saying the catholic church had their they had their nuns and their priests and a lot of hospitals and a lot of also they had the influence and what they they saw um, brown as a trinity catholic you mentioned it earlier on mm. that he was too liberal at a time when it wasn't popular Jude, he was uh in favor of the con Perception. He was in favour of um, a opposed apartheid, a opposed corporal punishment in schools. He was a total liberal, and the Catholic Church. He was. He basically the whole thing was. They they thought if uh, this scheme was introduced, uh, doctors would be telling people to go on the pill, and they'd be opposing the teaching of the Catholic Church. Yeah. And the power yeah. of the Catholic Church was such they did not want that. Basically, Jude, they destroyed a man for no reason. Well, not for no reason, for the, the reasons that you've just listed. They saw him as yeah. a threat because, let's face it, the things that he was advocating, uh, well, I don't know how they would see the, the the care of a mother and the care of a child up to 16 as being yeah. opposed to Catholic teaching. I would have thought that was completely... I, 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 that's exactly Catholic it. Teaching. Yeah. But the things that they objected to were... And I, I'm not sure to what extent Noel Brown made a secret of this or whether he headlined it. Uh, he was a fear of divorce. He was in favor of uh, contraception and he was in favor uh, of abortion. Uh, yeah. and, and the Catholic Church said they didn't want this bill because they saw it was leading to these things. And they were yeah. right. Um, so you could say that uh, the, the Catholic Church was acting according to its lights. And one would assume yeah. that they were sincere in that. Do you, or do you, would you not credit them with that? No, dude. I I think it, it was all about power and control. You know, you know. But Pat, it wasn't just socialized wasn't medicine. Just that. Wasn't just. I, that. But dude, hold on. It was. I, I was against the background of TB. Yeah. And he was introducing that. He wasn't. He wasn't advocating these sort of things. It was his own personal opinion. Basically, yeah. his. He he went on a big crusade against TB. He yeah. got on penicillin, and I can't remember the name of the other drug. And he started building no of the old hospitals. They were sites of a disease. He, he, he got rid of a lot of them and started building new hospitals. Yes. I think he was Minister for Health from 1948 to 51, and he was radical. Now, but the, the Catholic Church, they, they saw uh, what Brown was proposing, and if he got his way, he was so progressive, they would take, it would take more and more control away from them. And it was ideological. It wasn't the, the thing about health. It was the ideology of what he was proposing was a big problem, not, not the reality of what he was doing, you know, yeah. and that was their problem. Yeah, I would. I would think it's, it's I disgusting think it's, what they did on him. He, right. he he was more concerned with looking after people and let you know let uh, the 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 faith look after someone. But this was the Catholic Church inter interfering, not because of for health matters, but for ideological matters, and that's that's the big issue. It's a really it's a really um, I mean, on the face of it, 
when I heard it about it first and when I watched that documentary, I saw Noel Brown really as a victim, a sort of a gentle man, you know, yeah. a, a, a sensitive man who had been crushed by the, the weight of uh, John Charles McQuaid, who, let's, let's face it, looked like a, something of a thug. But, even. But, uh, John, a, John A. Costello was the Prime Minister of the Tisha. Yeah. Once the church became uh, known uh, to oppose it, uh, he had an ball to go ahead with it. And then Fianna Fáil tried to introduce a slightly amended version later on, and when it became known as the, the, that the church was opposing it as well, they, they pulled back as well. So the Catholic Church was nearly running the state, and you know Noel Brown had the nerve to actually go against him. And what he was doing was the right thing. It was the right thing for humanity, you know. And he, he fell for that. Dude, let me a wee quick story. Short. My mother, uh, she said, I remember discussing Noel Brown with her one day, and she said, ah, that man was nothing but a communist. No, Aye, the Catholic Church has done a, such a great job of, of sort of dis discrediting him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have I have some slight reservations in that uh, most people see the Catholic Church as having seen this man as a communist socialist crush him, and essentially that's yeah. what they did. But yeah, I, I get the impression that many people would see that as being simply the Catholic Church solely bent on control. Um, I think it's a wee bit more complicated than that. I think they saw keeping control of people as being for their eternal welfare. Like when I was growing up, my mm. mother would say, this life, is, is, it's over before you know it. And you know, when I get to this stage of my life, I think that's true. So yet the Catholic Church with these views, the vast majority of the people would have had similar views. So in a way, it wasn't simply that you had a nasty John Charles McQuaid versus an enlightened man like uh, Noel Brown. It was more than that. And I, I, would, I would be, maybe I'm silly, but I, I would credit them with sincerity in what they did. Now, that doesn't excuse what they did, but I think they believed that they were doing the right thing. To an extent, Jude, I agree. To another extent, I don't. Mm. Jesus, Jude, uh... I I I came. To, I'm an old man. I'm seventy in me now. I you're and not an old man. I grew up. Oh, we are that. Uh, but I was uh, no. But I was sitting. You know, I I've sat. I've done the same as you. I went to a present. I went to a Christian brothers school. Then went on to a diocesan uh, college, St. Eunice, and so on. And I look back now. The Catholic Church. They were, okay, they did some good things, but I did. They were, there was a control like a Taliban and well, there was total true. abuse of power and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah. you're giving them credit for maybe some of the good things. They also have to take the blame for some of the bad things. And oh, see that whole Noel Brown, no, that whole Noel Brown thing. I yeah. think the Catholic Church's behavior was disgraceful. I it really, was. genuinely do. Yeah, yeah. It was a terrible, terrible pity that that wasn't put in place because yeah. it, it could have changed. People would then begin to think about the state having a responsibility to look after the health of its citizens. Yeah, look after generally. Exactly, uh, it's and wasn't that been great? Uh, can you imagine that? Imagine that uh, if you read any of the history, and uh, I'm sure you have of the 1950s, the poverty. Imagine a government introducing a scheme that looked after the health of mothers and children up to the age of 16. It would have been so progressive. It would have helped so many people. And I wonder how many unnecessary deaths oh, and yeah. illnesses Thousands. and all the rest that could Thousands. have done. Thousands could have of misery. Yeah. Lots and yeah. lots of yeah. misery. The I misery. Agree completely and, the, you know, and by the way, Jude, every time you remember this too, in the Republic when people, while well, you guys were having your National Health Service after 1948, uh, people in the South still had to pay a doctor when they go when they visit them. And by uh, the way, the, the, a lot of doctors opposed Noel Brown because uh, they, they, yes. they saw some of their... Uh, yeah. Well, you know? they didn't want to break this private contract where people come and give them money. Because mo uh, maybe the government Brown, would Brown, give them Brown, uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it was it was, it was was both the church and the, med the medical fraternity. Uh, uh, private interest, yeah, yeah. Listen, we're really going to run out of time if we don't move on. It's very, very yeah. interesting. I'd encourage anybody who wants to find out more about mistakes that Ireland has made. Go to Brown, Wikipedia yeah. even and just read about Brown. He really yeah. is a fascinating uh, character. Okay, the second one is one that you raised <laughs> about a, another, another Noel. Only this is Noel Long, a 74-year-old man, uh, when his sins found him out. Do you want to tell us about that? And that was fascinating. Last week, he was found guilty of a murder of a Cork woman. She was, uh, she, I think she was 52. She was murdered 42 years ago. Dude, what it struck me, during the long, boring uh, days of COVID, it's amazing what you get involved in TV. I remember one Thursday night, and I started watching this thing called Me Medical Detectives. And it's, 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 halfway through it, I said, Jesus, look at the advances in forensic science and DNA and all that. 
president. This guy called uh, Noel Long, he, uh, he murdered this guy, a woman uh, whose name, God bless me, escapes me right now. I think anyway, it was Nora Sheehan. Nora Sheehan, was it? Nora Sheehan, that's it. She was from East, I think it was East Cork. Anyway, bottom yeah. line of it all was, he 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 uh, he got away with it for basically the cops knew he'd done it. He, uh, it was wasn't disclosed at his trial until he was found guilty. But he had previous convictions for sexual assaults. Hmm. But at the time they couldn't get any connect him. But anyway, uh, a cold case was really uh, was uh, brought up to speed there quite recently, and they discovered they they found some sort of hairs and semen samples and someone else. And suddenly they said, right, wait a minute, this matches Noel Long. Hmm. For, Forty two years later, they were able to convict him based on the science that has been you know, progressed thanks to the, you know, the, the improved techniques and forensics. Aye. So uh, he, is he in jail now then, this guy? He's Aye, he, was sentenced, he was sentenced, and I think, on Friday. But Aye. you know, no, what, the big point is, you know, years ago, many people can, uh, were involved in rapes and murders, and when they weren't arrested after a year or two, I presume they were sitting pretty, thinking, I've got away with that, got away with that, got away with that. I wonder how many this morning are sitting, you know, uh, to use that cool local term, shitting themselves, yeah. saying there's going to be a knock on my door shortly. Yeah. Well, I think the answer to that would be, to what extent would the Guardi give the time and effort on man power or woman power to the investigation of such cases? You see, we're told that the Guardi... I'd say, I'd hard... say, murder, I'd say murders would be, and rapes would be uh, near the top of the pile. Would they be historical, but, uh, murders. See? But they might, yeah, I, they might take it, they might say, oh, that happened 40 years ago. Here, we've got a slew of them here that happened 10 years ago or uh, last yeah. year. So I would, I would worry sort about of that. that. Uh, Jude, I think the, the Gardy like to do cold cases as well. So the whole uh, concept that you don't get away with it. Well, it would be great. It would be great if that was built up so people had that hanging over yeah. their heads because yeah. I, I see, there's something wrong. It's like, in many ways, you know, it's like the paratroopers and uh, the parachute regiment and Bloody Sunday. They, this guy was hauled out of his retirement home at 74 and put into jail. And nobody said, oh, that was a bad thing to do. Because they know the horrible thing he did to this Nora Sheehan. This, yeah. When the um, parachute regiment was being charged, oh, geez, the guy's out with flags saying, we support Soldier F. What yeah. rubbish. What rubbish. Um, John, it's, it's, like the old, the, like it's the old Nazis. Somebody said, why do you arrest a 97-year-old man? And somebody came back with so that no one can sleep in their bed. If you've done something, uh, the long arm of either a the law or your you know your mortality or whatever or moral, you know that you shouldn't be allowed to sleep sound in your bed. You should be waking at night saying, "Are they coming for me?" If you have murdered somebody or if you've been involved in genocide or whatever, mm -hmm. you should not you should you should not be allowed the comfort to sleep uh, soundly in your bed. Okay, Pat, that's that's us. I'm afraid. Well, can, are, are we starving our viewers? Are we depriving them of the bread of knowledge? Yeah, no, no, I think I think that's 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 enough food for one day. <laughs> okay, I'll give them indigestion. Okay, Jim. Okay, Pat, Bye. good talking to you.